The EFF leader is known for his outspokenness on matters relating to race, land and others. But is Malema creating unnecessary racial tensions and do such statements inflame race relations in the country? Or is there something underlying that the rest of the country perhaps does not see? These are some of the questions that we'll be answering tonight. I'm Kathy Mutatana and this is our nightly look at South Africa under the Ramaphosa administration. You're watching as it happens. Well, my guest on As It Happens Tonight is EFF leader Julius Malema. Julius, thanks for coming in tonight. Thank you for having me. When you look at that video, the clip of the interview that you did with TRT, with the benefit of hindsight and seeing the kind of responses that there have been to it, what do you make of it? I'm very proud. I'm proud that I'm not a coward like many of you who want to tell the truth and are scared. It is what it is. It has to be confronted like that. Um, if I had not spoken, many other things in this country will not be happening. It was a taboo to speak about the land. It was a taboo to speak about economic transformation. No one would have imagined marching to the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. They were untouchable like that. And I've taken a conscious decision, individually and collectively with the leadership of the EFF, to deal with unspoken matters which people are concerned about. You see, the, the, the uh, civil war which will happen in this country it will not be as a result of Malema saying one or two things. It will be out of the frustration our people are confronted with. There is a serious problem of underdevelopment. There is a serious problem of not sharing the resources of this country. And the whites becoming more richer and the blacks becoming more poor. We ought to confront it. We ought to be honest about it. We must not be scared. And generations after us will thank us. Uh, we'll get to your comments on the impending unlevelled revolution as you see it in the country. But perhaps let's begin with just the way in which how the statement within the interview was phrased, especially where it comes to the future of white people in the country and whether or not they should consider themselves safe in the country, it seems to leave the window open, creating room for general fear about what the future of white people in this country is. The white people in South Africa are the most safe people. There's no one in South Africa who's more safe than white people. They are untouchable. They receive immediate attention when they complain. Actually, if a white person dies in the farm or dies anywhere in the suburbs, it becomes news. And we forget that thousands and thousands of black people die every day in this country, do not receive the similar attention white people receive. Why? Because of privilege, because they enjoy the maximum protection this country can offer. So there's no white person who's threatened. They know, they know it is a discourse. They know it is robust at times. It can be scary at times. That's what democracy is about. It's about engaging on uncomfortable issues, but knowing very well that those who are in charge of such engagements do not possess even a potential of engaging um, in, a, in, a, in a genocide. I, I say in the similar interview that under my leadership, I don't see the EFF engaged in any form of racial or white genocide. It will never happen. So are you therefore intentional in terms of how you choose to frame things in, in a way that seeks to break the status quo of comfort as you see it where white people are concerned? I, I enjoy creating an uncomfortable situation for those who are comfortable uh, and making uh, comfortable for those who are not comfortable. That's the way we can disrupt the status quo. I'm not the type to comply with the status so quo. So are you saying that it's simply semantics on your part? No, it's a commitment. If it was semantics, it would have disappeared a long time ago. You can go into the archives of the ET before ENCA existed. I said all of this when I was very young. I'm committed to it. Many people tried to persuade me of these things. Many have punished me for the views I hold. I've never changed. I've lost a lot of things, both personally and politically, for use. And I will never change them because I don't agree for anyone to bully me uh, for thinking. No one can take away my thinking capacity. You may not enjoy it. You may be uncomfortable. But, you know, the recent history teaches me that at the beginning, they disagree with me. 
And as it goes on, majority of them begin to say the same things that we have been saying. For those who see it as a call then to, I suppose, more generally create um, racial, racial tension within the country and even as some form of um, subtext or subliminal message around white people and how they should be treated, how do you engage it on that level? Because if I hear you correctly, you're saying that it's part of your political discourse. But for those who see it even as a call to then uh, act out, what you're saying in that discourse? Would have wiped them out if there was a, a call to such an action. There's no such a call to, to the action. I'm saying to you, depending on how you conduct yourself moving forward, you might attract serious onslaught on yourselves. You have to come to the party, and the sooner you do that, the better before we engage the unled revolution, which will be anarchy. And this will be necessitated by the fact that you are in possession of 90% of the resources of South Africa, whereas you are constituting less than 10% of the population of South Africa. This on its own is a recipe for disaster. It's not Malema's creation. They've uh, created it during apartheid. They're still protecting it till to date. The sooner they change that, the better, so that you don't create environment conjured for racial wars, or rather even a, you know, a civil war um, uh, in South Africa. It but can only be stopped by sharing the resources of this country. And certainly when you speak about this unled revolution, a part of it seems to be equated to the inequality levels that exist in, in the country. Inequality is not something that's unique to South Africa. And in societies the world over where there is inequality, it doesn't automatically result in revolution. So what then makes you think that South Africa within itself is ripe for such an unled revolution to take place? South Africa is already in a crisis. Me and you will know that our people are revolting every day in the townships. Our people are burning buildings. Our people are, are taking... Um, state institutions for lack of service delivery, poverty and inequality in South Africa. It is happening and it's happening in some pockets of the country. If not properly addressed, it will come together at some point and it will be a disaster for our country. We are a unique nation. We cannot be compared to anyone. We know our rights. We are not existing in a totalitarian society where we will be scared to speak truth to power and take that which is being said by white supremacist as truth and uh, as something that cannot be challenged. But we are known for challenging uh, uh, those type of things. But when we speak about revolution, we're also speaking about, you know, fundamentally changing whether it, the economy, the political structure and the society um, or state as it were. And so to the, to the extent that it would need the majority of South Africans, do you feel that that's where the majority of South Africans are? Well, 1976 was not the majority of South Africans, but it was a turning point. And, and we will have that time repeating itself at some point based on inequalities. I agree, a revolution is a complete overhaul. And for as long as things continue the way they are, people occupying the land permanently in conflict with law enforcement, people fighting amongst themselves uh, because they are fighting for scarce resources, once it comes together, it will catch fire, and those uh, questions of why is it not happening in other countries will be irrelevant. Because it's not happening in other countries, it doesn't mean it can't happen here. Yes, so but, let's but, resolve but, but, but it before it happens because we've got experience of it happening in 1976. We've got experience of it happening from 1985 nonstop until the apartheid regime succumbed to internal and international pressure. Uh, so we, it's not for the first time that our people will revolt. Do They've you, done so before. But, so what I'm really pointing to is the support of the masses in such uh, an, an uprising, at least as, as a revolution rather as you see it. The masses are on board. The masses are themselves complaining, but they are hoping that uh, the solution will come with the leadership, uh, particularly from different political formations. They see us engaging. They see us pushing. All these types of things that we're doing we are actually giving them hope. And once they realize that even after all of this has happened, still there's nothing that has changed materially, they will tell themselves. They will say the leadership has failed. We still have got 
organizations like the EFF, which are inspiring hope, and the people are saying, perhaps let's give it time, uh, and uh, these new formations uh, will deliver that which those who came before them failed to deliver. Very briefly, before we go to a sure. uh, break, do you think there should be a revolution in South Africa? Absolutely. There should be a revolution. There should be a led revolution, which is orderly, but is radical, and it changes the status quo. What does South Africa look like post-revolution? What kind of system would be in place post-revolution? Well, post-revolution, the state will own the strategic means of production. The economy will be in the hands of the people as invested by the Freedom Charter. The land shall be in the hands of our people. And there will be equal society. In that equal society, there shall be peace and harmony. All right, we're going to continue our conversation with uh, Julius Malema on As It Happens.